Well, I'm looking forward to this. As I take a bite, I notice Hanako trying her hardest not to look like she's looking at me. It's nothing special, but then again, I can't really complain. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to cooking for myself. Not bad. I guess this is the stuff you made. This is made with the stuff you bought yesterday? Y yes Hanako's eyes shout at me, begging for some kind of feedback. Well, it was clearly worth it. Thanks, Hanako. I, I, I wanted to show you this a after yesterday. It's okay. I was just a little surprised at the stuff you were buying. Hanako's always like to experiment when it comes to food. I think it's good most of the time. While Lily's smile doesn't waver, the slight change in her tone tells me that things have not gone so well in the past. And it's not like Hanako has many people to sample her cooking. Hang on, was Lily wa waiting for me to go first? She didn't start eating until after I said it was alright. Her cheeky grin tells me this was a deliberate action on her part. I'll have to try and work out how to get one over her in the future. To make up for this. Well, it's good, and that's all that counts, right? R right. Lily, satisfied at not being the first to sample Hanako's creation, begins to consume the food in front of her. I find myself staring as I watch her chopsticks gently touch the plate, their tips delicately poking and tracing too quickly to... Tracing to qu oh okay, tracing to quickly ascertain the positions of the food as she dexterously picks it up. One might think she was were a child playing with her food, if not for the situation. Although she does it with such care and thoughtlessness that it's obvious this is simply how she eats this kind of meal. Not wanting to miss out, I start filling up myself. Hanako takes a different approach, waiting until Lily and I have our hands clear before quick, quickly snatching up her share. Before long, the containers are empty, save for the still shut rice container. Thank you, Hanako. That was filling. No, no. Thank you for the bread. Yes, it would have been a disaster if not for that. Don't say that, Haisao. You'll make Hanako feel bad. You're both welcome. But now I must get, be getting back. It's far too easy to be late after eating here. Yeah, I see what you mean. I think we'll just clean up here and then head off. Well then, good day. Lily leaves, her tane tapping away down the quiet hallway. Hanako and I qu quickly pack our things and stay seated, waiting for the bell. Together we stare out the window in and into the endless azure sky. If it weren't for the pealing of the bells, I would have sworn that time had stopped. The urge to skip class rises in my gut. I shoot a glance at Han Hanako, who shows no signs of moving either. Not just yet. The interval between the warning bells and the end of the lunch bells passes in the blink of an eye. Uh, we should really go. People will freak out and start a search party if we skip. Hanako sighs. You're right. Slowly, she rises to her feet, and I follow suit. Silently, we make our way up the old stairs to the third floor, and then to our classroom. At the door, I take point and open the door ahead of Hanako, bowing my head down in an apology in advance. I'm sorry we were late, teacher. I'm greeted not by stern ward words nor by an angered look an angered instruction to take my seat but simply the silence created by 15 or stu so students not to trying not to laugh what oh mutao ever tardy has yet to arrive however the fact that hanako and i have arrived together together is blatantly obvious Pff pfa make that Make that about 14 students trying and one student failing. <laughs> the lovers return. 
<laughs> yeah, thanks. You can calm down now. Misha, just calm down. I stepped through the door and re realized that Hanako is firmly pressed against my back, hiding, it, hiding herself from the class. With my steps coming closer to my desk, she eventually breaks from me and stiffly walks to her own. Her efforts to mentally block everyone's presence from her mind are written fairly clearly on her face. Quickly checking the door for any signs of the teacher's arrival, I make a trip to Hanako's desk and whisper in her ear. Don't worry about Misha, she's always like this. I enjoyed myself today. Don't sweat it, okay? Hanako nods her head, nods her head behind her folded arms, but still doesn't show her face. I yearn to stay and console her more, but Matao picks this exact moment to enter the class halfway through his lecture, as if he started it in the hallway. Which, of course, is directly proportional to the char charge, but inversely proportionally what? Inversely proportionally to the square of the distance. He's so engrossed in his speech that he doesn't even notice me sneaking back to my seat from Hanako's desk. While Mutao's spiel rambles on, Misha leans over to me. The teacher may not have noticed your tardiness, but I did. Are you going to tell? That much is obvious from the show you just put on. I've been instructed to let you off the hook for today. But on only one but only on one condition. I'm not going to join the student council. And what are you talking about? Letting me off the hook. You've been skipping a couple of days. Oh, and that would be You have to help us this afternoon. I crane my neck to look over Misha's shoulder. Shizune is conveniently not making eye contact with me. Fine, just for today. I've already told you I'm not joining the council, remember? Of course. Doing so would be considered, um, considered. She looks down at her notebook, obviously looking for her place in her script. Under duress and hence would be against regulations. How very strange of you to be considerate of the regulations now. Things should be done by the book. It's just that the book hasn't been written for every situation. So there are times when it can't be ignored. The phone is ringing. No. <coughs> Back. And yet, you two wonder why the... Is the phone still ringing? Okay, it's done now. And yet, you two wonder why no one else wants to be in the student council. After poking her tongue out at me, Misha returns to her work workbook, and we battle our way through the through the latter half of the school day. Trapped. Before I can even stand up, Misha and Shizune have placed their hands on both my shoulders. Hey, I said I'd help out. Damn. This is just insurance, Haisao. Insurance. Huh? Haisao? Hanako timidly tries to leave the room by circling around us, and I suddenly realize this may be my one chance to escape. Oh, hey, Hanako. What's up? Please help me get out of this situation. Hey, what makes you think you've got time to chat? Oh, relax. This won't take long. Sorry, Hanako. What were you saying? I, w I was going to the library, and I thought... And uh, I thought... Hanako's thumbs down, dance around to each other's, and her eyes flit around the room looking everywhere but at us. Misha, be quiet. Sorry, Hanako, but Haisao has to come with us. He's got work to do. Oh, but you can help out too if you'd like. Um, so how about it, Haisao? I'm saving? Save. Uh. Yes. No. I do not like you, Misha. Shizune, you're okay. It's just Misha. Hey, Shizune. I know I said I'd help, but I forgot I already made plans. 
Besides, I've helped out more than my share fair life. My share fair. Phone! <laughs> Calm down! I'll promise I'll make it up to you some other time. Oh, that was an angry glare. Shuzune and Amisha release their grip on me and, a lo and have a long, deep, and silent conversation. Well, you have a point there. To be honest, we were only going to spend the rest of the budget on cakes. So if you're not there, it works out better. More cake for us. Wah -ha -ha. I'm sadly out of breath from running back and forth. I am so out of shape. More so than I saw. Shizune about faces and marches out the door, and Misha skips out after her. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Last last week, those two were like bloodhounds or prison guards. Or maybe prison guards bred from bloodhounds. I can't believe I just thought that, let alone saying it aloud. I think I need to move away from Kenji. That would be a very good idea, Hazel. Never mind. Anyway, should we go to the library? Sure. <laughs> Hanako follows me through the still crowded halls to the library, using me as a shield. As soon as we are through the door, Hanako bolts for the counter where Yuko is stacking books. Before I can catch up, Hanako has whispered something to her. Um, you'd find that in nonfiction, but I don't know where exactly. If you want, I can look it up. N never mind. You just made Hanako very depressed. Hey, Yuko, what's th all this about? Oh, Hisao, Hanako was just looking for a book on... N nothing A book on nothing in the non-fiction section. I, I was just... I shoot a glance at Yuko. She looks like she's about to burst from the pressure of keeping Hanako's request a secret. Yuko, what did... Chess! She's looking for a chess book. I take a mental note to never entrust Yuko with any important information. Whoa, your eyes got huge. Yuko? I'm sorry, Hanako. It just slipped out. Well, it's not a secret anymore. Come on. I'll give you a hand. I should really brush up on my skills, too. Uh, okay. Yuko disappears behind the counters in shame as Hanako and I wandered into the depths of the nonfiction section. I know there is supposed to be a system for categorizing these books, but I don't see how anyone can decipher it without spending half their life researching it. That's probably why all the librarians I know are neurotic. Towards the ends of towards the end of the aisle, between a book on a card trick on card tricks and some book on kids games, stands a single book bearing the title Chess Tactics for Champions. Before I can reach for it, Hanako has the book in her hands, clutching it to her chest. Well, I guess that's yours then. Mind if I borrow it when you're fin finished? No, I saw it. The whole point of this was so she could beat you. Sure, I just... I, I haven't really played anyone ag against anyone but Lily before. So I thought... Damn. It's not like I was trying to beat Hanako deliberately or anything, but she seems to have taken it to heart. Then again, at least this means she wants to play with me again. That's a plus, right? 